Hey everybody, Andrew and Jess from Gameosity here, and today, in thinking about board games that feel like video games, that make you feel like you're in a game, we started talking about one of my favorite genres of game, which is the roguelike genre. Yeah. Those games where you die a lot. Yeah, yes, admittedly. They're games that are kind of defined by how hard they are, and they, you, every Start time... fresh every time. Yes, and every time you play them, they're a little bit different, so it's not something you can kind of learn by rote, and they're all about sort of, you adapt, you survive as long as possible, you die, you start again. Um, and uh, in thinking about the board games that we had, it's rare that a game kind of captures that feeling, although any game with like a good event deck yeah. has kind of shades of that, but a game that we think actually does a really good job of feeling like a roguelike game is Post-Human. <laughs> <laughs> now, just because I don't like roguelikes doesn't mean that I'm not going to like this too, because Post-Human also hits on something that I really enjoy. It makes, it, it feels a lot like one of my favorite games, Fallout. Yeah, it, it has shades of that, just just enough to, to kind of, it's that post-apocalyptic, you know, moving through the the wilderness, scavenging. Yeah. But, uh, but let's talk about what Post-Human is. Okay. In Post-Human, all the players are trying to make it to the fortress, which is the last bastion of civilization. They'll do this by moving along the trail, having different encounters along the way. Each player will be building their own unique map out of tiles, and along the way they'll be having encounters, scavenging for supplies, finding equipment, and learning new skills. Each player's character is comprised of a player board, which keeps track of their vital statistics, their health, their morale, their hunger, and even their inventory. Equipment comes in the form of cards, which can be used interchangeably. Players can equip melee weapons as well as ranged attacks, and they can even level up over time by using experience that they gain along the way. Combat is dice-driven, with players optionally using bullets to use ranged weapons, and then closing for melee attacks. All encounters bring players one step closer to the fortress and thereby ending the game. The game is won by the first player who manages to make it to the fortress, and then there's a series of tiebreakers if multiple players manage to do it at the same time. But there's also another end game condition where uh, no player survives the trip to the fortress and everyone's a mutant. So the things about Post Human that I think make them feel the most like a video game for me are the fact that. First of all, the encounters, right? You, yeah. You flip over these three encounter decks, and they're in ascending difficulty, and you never really know what's coming next. Like, it's probably a combat, because the game is like, pretty combat-centric. Like, 80%. Like, yeah, <laughs> and like many video games. Um, but you may be doing a skill check to try and talk your way past something, or befriend somebody, or, or just make a choice yeah. about how you handle a situation, and I love that. I think that's really, really cool. Yeah, my favorite part is that although the game will give you characters that you can play as, you can also build your own. Yeah, that's very cool. You get a uh, set of skill points that you can spend on your skills any way you like. You kind of just and, fill them in. Yeah. With little tabs. And you'll get a random assortment of equipment and weapons and skills. And so every time you play, it can really feel fresh. Yeah, you basically make these unique characters. And in doing so, you kind of have a new story every time yeah. you play through the game. And between that and the encounters, and you, maybe you get a follower, maybe you get some neat skills that suggest who your character is, mm -hmm. uh, it, it becomes this becomes this sort of emergent story. Uh, the other thing that I think is, is very video game-ish about it is the combat. Yeah. Because um, there's a lot of, like, uh, determining your bonuses, rolling dice, and comparing values, and determining who hits when. Yeah, and you have the, the turn-based strategy, kind of. Yeah, when I say the combat feels like a video game, I don't mean first-person shooter. <laughs> I mean turn-based tactical. Yeah. Um, but since it's all it's all dice, and, and you need to make these decisions, your equipment affects how, how different things work, yeah. uh, it's, it's very neat. It's also kind of cool because when you're fighting the mutants... There's always a chance that you're going to get a scar from the mutants. Oh, yeah. And yeah. if you get enough scars, you can actually become a mutant. Yeah, totally. <laughs> uh, when you when you get you know messed up enough out in the wasteland, yeah. there's the chance that you're going to go mutant. And once you've become a mutant, 
your victory conditions change entirely. You're not trying to get to the fortress to be safe. You you want everybody to come join the mutant side, and so then it becomes player versus player. You really start going after the other the other members of the of the game. Although it was never cooperative to begin with. No. Um, but it's interesting that it can go aggro if you let it. If yeah, uh, and and the other thing is like even the mutants are different because the yeah. scars you pick up determine what kind of mutant you are. So like in one game we had a mutant mutation who just happened to work out super fast, you know, stealthy claws, and then there was another mutant. Yeah, I had the super mutant. Yeah, just like <laughs> tank, you know, like <laughs> everything super was fighting. strong. Everything was just like battering ram punches and stuff. So it's it the variability that's in here is very cool. The criticisms. Um, the rules are written a little clunky, uh, it, it, the rule book probably could have been, um, machined a little bit more, and, um, and I think that the combat is a little plotting at first, yeah. like, until you really hit the, the groove. Especially if you have four players, it can take a lot longer. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Because everybody's has their encounter, um, or two, yeah. depending on how they're exploring. Um... But that said, once you get into the groove of things, uh, it, it doesn't play slow. It actually plays too very well, um, we found, anyway. But by and large, we think that Post-Human is a really interesting game. It's, it's an intriguing take on this whole bringing a roguelike feel to the table. And, uh, and there's an expansion to it that, yeah. that I somehow don't have yet, <laughs> but I'm sure I'll fix that at some point and uh and what i hope the expansion brings is just more because yeah. more is what would make this game even better i'm hoping for more encounters that aren't just fighting because yeah. it's really neat to see the little stories that are within the game for sure for sure overall i think post-human just hits those notes yeah it's a fun one and and it and it could just as easily be a video game as a, a cardboard totally but i'm actually glad it's it's you know in a box. Anyway, I'm Andrew and this is Jess from Gameosity. We'll see you next, next game. Hey there, thanks for watching. If you want to see more videos like this, give us a like and hit that subscribe button. And we'll see you next game. <laughs>